I'm gonna give you 10 ridiculous reasons to fly the Black Shark. Then I'll get a more serious note and show you how the Werewolf is a very different experience from anything else in DCS and likely any other sim out there. In no particular order, you can snipe out three separate targets with precision in a few seconds. Got BTR surrounded by civilians and moving traffic? Only this gunfighter can handle it. You can literally fly by looking somewhere. Your autopilot can keep your healer stable in a flight path you pilot. Or you can have it fly a route for you as you focus on scouting and planning. Or you could disable all the stability and do barrel rolls, loops, 7 degree banks, all while fully loaded and armed. You can lock something up as you look at it. So you can run and gun with accuracy. I'm not talking about putting a mark near the target then slewing over with a hat. I mean look and lock. Ranged and ready to fire. You can volley shells on targets unseen and launch missiles outside of line of sight. Then expose yourself for minimal time to guard it in. There's some crazy trick shots possible with your skills. The coaxial rotors allow for final maneuvers, side slip and the powerful engines for incredibly rapid ascents, which other DCS healers at the moment cannot do. Your moving map system allows you to search for towns, airports, scroll through different marks quickly and even change settings to be compatible with other airframes. Get all your wingmen having targets in scope by pressing only two buttons each. That's maybe eight seconds for your entire formation to receive your target and fire on that escaping convoy that you spotted. The shark can take out its SAM sites like no other airframe can. This is 60 of the nastiest surface to air threats taken out by one shark, one payload. If you can spot them first and stay low standoff, you're untouchable. SA-15s would take down many harms before you can scratch this site, and the hills nearby aren't conducive for a jet approach. The fun, the challenge from skill mastery, nothing I mention is given. It's not finding and locking stuff for you. It's giving you no information, little hand-holding, as complex as hell. But that's the fun part, it's all you. Not an automated computer or a waypoint guided cruise missile that's doing its thing while you watch is your crack shot piloting skill and mastery of the systems that brings out the werewolf. I liken the shark the most to the tomcat. Transitional era between hyper capability and automation needing the crew to know their systems to make it shine become a daily contender with more modern automated systems. The helo game is very different from fly by wire jets. You're slower, you carry less weaponry, you shoot from closer. Your flight is more complex as each control affects the flight path in multiple significant ways. But you can approach mast where no jet can, you can loiter and recon, you can rearm with temporary hidden fobs far closer than any built airfield and you're in the thick of it. That ground those trees always trying to kill you, they're only a few feet away now at all times. That wind you really only care about in landing well, now you're always near landing with trees nearby. The AAA you never care for, they're real now. An enemy cap? Well, you just pray for them. Your typical mission in DCS, should you choose to accept it, is very different from any other healer in DCS right now. To survive and thrive in a high threat environment. You raise anything with tracks, wheels and stilts that looks at you wrong. If you're low enough, Sam's won't bother you. Your 30mm sniper cannon has a very high velocity and recoil compensation from the side mount, outranging a lot of AAA, melting light armor with accuracy, and even denting some main battle tanks up close. Your Vicar Whirlwind anti ground missile outranges anything that can fire on you while low, and they one shot any ground vehicle. You can hover and pop out of cover to attack, or you can go in hard and fast, your choice. Most healers in DCS exist, or will exist, because they're good at something. Either the hottest tech when they were designed, the most economical or easy to maintain, or designated for a specific use they excel at. I'd recommend you get them all, but finance and time are limited, so if you don't have a sweet spot in your heart for a specific healer, I'll point out some of the following broad differences so you can decide if the shark's for you. If you want to ground pound like an ATNC, 
with the simplicity of a bird's eye view orbits, noticing another wingman's cake and seeing targets lit up with FLIR, then get an A10C. In a lower threat environment, it can lay down far more precision ordnance. That's just how it is. The UE or ME8 utility helos can't reliably take on anything with more than a scrap of armor. To even attempt it, they need to get within daily reflex and sniper range of every main battle tank and BMP in the area. Overheating is real for the UE, and Vortex Ring State is never far away for any of them. The Mi-8 can push similar top speeds to the K-50, though it handles like a space bus. The shock's governor is protected from all but the most extreme conditions, and it's your coaxial rotors and engines that are so powerful you can simply power through the early stages of Vortex Ring State. You never have wind or rotor downwash interfering with your tail rotor effectiveness. In fact, that glued on Gecko tail can be shot clean off and you won't even lose fuel. Only some rudder effectiveness and your Doppler. The Shark's autopilots you set with a trimmer will hold your bank, pitch, heading and maybe even the altitude if you so wish. So in the longer journeys you can focus on planning, recon and getting your weapons ready. Your nav systems are incredibly powerful, but with the autopilot channels on, and counterbalancing coaxial rotors, you won't get that experience all the varied flight regimes of I'm flying a helo with different pedals and cyclic needed at different speeds or adjusting flight every minute even when trimmed. So if you want that helo flying typical experience, the black shock may not be for you. If you want to do search and rescue, sling load things and do transport, then get a hip or a UE. That's the jam. The 30mm high-X rounds of the Shark combined with your helmet sight can mow down infantry at long range if you're not using rockets, but it's your piloting skills that enable that side strafe and you are spotting the infantry yourself. With the HIP and the UE, the door gunners, air controlled or good multi-crew, will do that for you as you charge straight through a point blank. The coming Mi 24P Hind has an iconic history and can carry troops. But this wasn't always appreciated by the pilots though, as it left them landing in dangerous territory instead of keeping up their speed. And the armor for the troop compartment was dead weight when they weren't transporting. The shark has no dead weight. It's more agile, more powerful gun and engines, and the gun can be directed by sight. The black shark is the first successor to the hind, and it can do that same high speed attack run if you want. But it's also perfectly happy harboring its standoff from dangerous armor and sands. The Gazelle is lighter and agile, and some models have FLIR and RWR. Some models carry potent hot missiles, but these often bring you in range of Tunguska 30 mils and tow missiles if you're not absolutely careful. With any significant payload, the Gazelle cannot keep up with the shark speed fully loaded. By design, the Gazelle is less tank killer and more scout. The coming Kiowa might not be more agile, but it'll have mast mounted sensors and coordination with other NATO systems. While it can have token amounts of hellfires and other munitions, you're less suited to go tank hunting and better off directing the heavy hitters. If the systems of the Shark and Kai were compatible, they'd be ideal teammates. In fact, the K-50 was designed to fly with the K-29 with an upgraded sensor package as a scout helo, which did well in combat, or the K-52 commander variant. Ultimately, with the fall of the Soviet Union, budget cuts, etc., they just went with all K-52s instead. This also meant that sharks weren't all converted to night attack variant with FLIR and other niceties. So, night flying is at best an interesting challenge for the shark. As an attack helo with armor plates, cockpit visibility is very limited. So, situational awareness, not given from the excellent moving map and daylink sharing system between wingmen, is the shark's Achilles heel. Since DCS doesn't have the upgraded K29 nor the K52 is designed to fly with, a Kaiwa Gazelle's FLIR and RWR are still useful to scout for the K50, even if it can't receive tailing targets or lasing from them directly. The coming Apache D is more similar to the Black Shark, although the successor K52 Alligator is probably the most comparable in terms of capability. There's a bunch of stuff I could speculate on, but suffice to say, the Apache splits the workload, so you get that buddy experience and less stress. But on the other hand, you may be having less fun doing only half of it. The Apache should be more versatile and will have an easier time spotting targets. 
If kill count is the purpose of your DCS, then I'd say the Apache will find and destroy hidden targets more easily, but won't necessarily be destroying more than the Black Shark if it's daytime and your piloting's on point. Both healers require a lot of systems knowledge to make it work, using different logic. Unless you pigeonhole yourself with learning only one of the two seats in the Apache, of course. In the Shark, the process is more manual, more you. The worker and pressure, it's all on you. But there's always something interesting to do. Most other airframes have you either heads down slewing on a screen, or piloting a pepper to that target you slew to. The K-50, you're maybe piloting a side slip while using your hair tracking or VR to lock targets, using your pedals to make sure your weapons are within their limits while keeping an eye out for SAM launches, and your Vickers laser or uh, explosion to see if you can launch or slew over the second Vicar yet. The Apache can definitely use an ace pilot, but won't demand it as much as the Black Shark to stay alive. I want both in my life, the Apache for the shared bite experience and a smooth, more survivable ride, and the Shark when my piloting skill makes it sing. If you want the attack healer experience right now, the Black Shark module is the oldest and one of the most mature ones given the complex systems model. It has a few bugs, notably some campaign and AI wingmen, but which model doesn't? Black Shark 3 is coming out likely. 2021, new high-res exterior, igli anti-air missiles, a missile warning system, and directional infrared countermeasure system have been advertised. If you think you like the shark, I'd recommend getting the Black Shark 2 now. Supposedly, there'd be some form of discount for existing BS2 users, and while BS3 will make the shark more survivable, I don't think it functionally changes your experience with it. The Black Shark's an experience you'll never find simulated in any other ELO. If everything doesn't go drone, and one-man attack healers are ever produced again, it'll likely be automated to point and click. The Black Shark is all capable, if you are. If you wanted the module to test the limits of your piloting, gunnery and tactics at the same time, this is it. It's available now, often on discount. Have fun. This is Folk. Cheers.